This week, we are going to change our theme up a little bit. We're looking strictly, or not strictly, but mostly at uh, Roman Daily Lives. Now, earlier in the week, uh, actually on Wednesday, you guys watched those two videos, one on the boy's life, one on the girl's life. I hope you enjoyed them. Sorry I didn't give you a lecture, but I thought that those videos that Ted Ed put out were pretty good, and they covered the different lives pretty pretty well. I am fascinated to look at the lives of the boys and girls and see how different they were from each other, especially with Demisha, Demisha, and Demisha. Now, today, we're going to be looking at the houses and how different their lives are between the wealthy and the poor. And so after you watch the video, it says how different are the lives of the Roman wealthy and the Roman poor, how the Roman emperors keep the poor from uh, fighting for their rights. And if you do the extension, there's a short story you can write. Uh, you can do some more research if you want. That's up to you. Now, Roman housing, daily life. Uh, Roman apartments, called the insulae. Now, insulae actually means island because these apartments were kind of islands to themselves. They might, be up to be, they might be up to about seven stories tall. I believe this one is from the town just down the coast. And I, Ostia, I think it's Ostia, uh, just on the coast down from Rome, down the Tiber River. Now, these buildings would be brick. Roman bricks are kind of interesting. They're pretty flat, pretty broad. Um, and as they would build these bricks, they or brick houses, apartments, they'd cover them with cement so they'd have a stucco on them. And then they'd paint the insides with little uh, mosaics and stuff. Now, they could be up to seven stories tall. In fact, Augustus capped it at 70 feet because these buildings wouldn't be super stable. And oftentimes they would collapse or they'd catch fire. And so if things fell off the top of the roof, it might kill people in the streets. People in the buildings are going to die. It's going to be a big problem. Um, and we talked about this a little bit too earlier, but they didn't have fire departments. Now, so the city did become safer over time where the gangs became less and the security of the city became increased and so people could be safer walking through the city. Now, if you've ever been to a city in Rome, or not a city in Rome, but a city in Europe, streets can be pretty narrow and they wind and they're not always straight. And so it's pretty easy to get lost in some of these ancient cities. Now, in these apartments, the poor people would live up higher because the higher you were, the less convenient it was to the street and the plumbing down below. Everything was down on the streets. The food, the bathrooms, the water, stores, everything was down there. And so if you had a small room up in the very top floor, it'd be a pretty poor place to live. Now they did have landlords that uh, owned these places and they would try to maximize their profits by cramming as many people in there as possible. In the video yesterday, I think Lucius, the son, the 17 year old son, sees people in those apartment buildings across the street from his uh, Subura um, Domus. And we'll talk about the Domus here in a minute. Now, later on in trading time, he did lower the, the height of those buildings to 60 feet. Um, fire departments, I was talking about that. Uh, you would pay people to um, be fire people for you. And so you would kind of prepay the fire department or if there a fire started, it cost you a lot more. And so you'd go around and you'd pay people to take care of your building, to watch your building for you. Uh, this is the Domus. Now this is where the wealthy Romans lived. And for security, you wouldn't have windows to face the outside. All the windows would face inside into courtyards um, or atriums. And so they'd face inside. Now, this is a floor plan or, yeah, a footprint floor plan of this Roman Domus. Now, I didn't go through and I, I didn't translate any of those words for you. But um, if you want to, you can go through and, and uh, translate those words for us. Uh, Tabernay. Those little buildings up front, those are the stores. And I think a tavernet is kind of like a bar where you sell food, drinks to people who are walking by. 
Uh, typically, the wealthy Romans would have their stores up front, and they would sell things up there. Now, you might lease or rent out a little storefront to a poor person where they could sell their, their food. Now, Romans would typically eat their dinners laying down. The wealthy Romans would. And so you would have different dining rooms in the back. Um, you'd have these pools that would catch water. And also the wealthy Romans would have their own personal bathrooms. So they wouldn't have to go down the street like the poor people to the, the public bathroom. And that would be, that'd be pretty interesting to see. Oh, the biggest uh, house that I saw was in Pompeii. And it was about the house of this wealthy Roman in Pompeii. It was about half the size of Lincoln Middle School. It was pretty big. It had a very large uh, courtyard in the middle, actually a couple courtyards. And if you remember seeing the mosaic of Alexander the Great in uh, the Greek unit, you may that that house had a floor that was that picture it was pretty fascinating now this this is a own bath and that the reason i'm showing you this is because i want to go a little bit more into depth about what was happening in the baths because yesterday they talked about the baths for the boys and the girls and when the girls would go when the guys would go and that's not the only story about the baths. Now, the picture right up there with the big tub, the Pompeii Caldarium. Caldarium means hot room. The frigidarium is the cold water room. The tepidarium is that lukewarm. And Romans would go in there. I don't know where they'd start off in, but uh, typically they'd go in there and get massaged, get scriggled, scrape all the dirt off of them, um, and they'd spend time between the caldarium and the frigidarium and the tepidarium. Now this room here is the caldarium and you notice that the roof is still intact and that's in Pompeii. It's a really cool room. Now, when I went into that room, there are parts of the wall that have fallen down and parts of the floor you can look underneath because in these caldariums, you would have slaves who would light fires and they'd pump the smoke through the floor and up the walls. And so the walls in this caldarium are hollow. The floor is hollow. And that would heat the floor and the walls to make this caldarium super, super hot. It's a sauna. Um, now the picture down below here, down beneath my little sign there, that is um, Caracalla's bath. And Caracalla's bath is very close to where Nero had his house. It is not too far from the Colosseum. It's opposite the, the Forum from the Colosseum. So the Colosseum between the Forum and Caracal's Baths. Uh, Caracal's Baths probably half mile to a mile away from the Forum or so. But this bath complex was huge and it was about the size of Lincoln Middle School. So imagine a third of Lincoln Middle School being a caldarium where they would pump hot air through the floors and up the walls to superheat that room. Um, the wealthy Romans, they'd take the baths. The slaves would be running all of the machinery, keeping the baths hot, everything else. Yesterday, we saw Demetia being carried by these birdie slaves to the streets. Um, in earlier programs or earlier topics, we looked at the slavery in Rome and there were thousands of slaves, hundreds of thousands of slaves in Rome. Uh, you didn't always want to know who the slaves were because if the slaves knew how many there were, they, the Romans feared that they would revolt. Now, and I did include a picture of, uh, or the map of Rome again, Colosseum right in that area and Jericho's Baths, I think are down in this area somewhere. Um, but Rome was a big city, about a million people. And you had these uh, insulate all over the city. So what you need to do today is look at the lives. And you don't have to do a lot of research, but um, think about the lectures we gave the last couple of days. Think about the lectures of the, um, the rich boy and the rich girl. Now the poor Romans, they would have to, I mean, there wasn't school. And all the kids would go to work with their parents if they could. Um, little kids were seen as extra ways to make money. So answer the questions and uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good week. Stay safe.